Tonight, the Kellogg man accused of murdering four of his neighbors, filing new court documents, asking the state to suppress evidence, saying he wasn't read his Miranda rights until after he admitted to the murders. And a weather whiplash is coming to the inland northwest. We're talking about dramatically cooler temperatures and a chance for some wintry precipitation. Plus some explosive plays and big time hits propel the Seahawks past their divisional rivals. The touchdown catch that you have to see. And a familiar face joining the evening news starting tomorrow. All that story coming up. You're watching 4 News Now at 11. Good evening, and it is great to have you with us here as we close out another weekend together. I'm Jordan Smith. Tonight, we hope you were able to soak up that last bit of beautiful weather because those sunny, warm October days, those are going to be a thing of the past starting this week. Meteorologist Matt Gray joins us now. Matt, we are in for a rude awakening this week. A rude awakening maybe the understatement of the year, Jordan. Take a look at these low temperatures over the next few days where we are going to reach uncharted territory for this fall. In the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area, we haven't even come close to freezing yet this season. We're going to go way past that over the next few days. 40s tonight, we drop into the 30s Monday and Tuesday. And as we get into Wednesday, we're going to start to see, Wednesday night rather, we're going to start to see those 20s and even some very cold. You can see by the white line here, this is our average for this point of the year. Well below normal morning temperatures by the time we get to the end of the week and early next weekend. And when cold air comes in, it means that our snow levels and our potential for something other than just rain happens there as well. Now, Tuesday morning, well above the metro region is where we're going to see our snow levels Tuesday morning. But by Wednesday morning, it is all the way down into downtown Spokane, that freezing line. And what do you know? We've got some wet weather coming in as this cold air rushes in for Tuesday into Wednesday. And so Wednesday morning, we are zeroing in on that part of the forecast and taking another look at the cold temperatures beyond coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, Matt, thanks so much for that. The Kellogg man accused of murdering four of his neighbors is asking the state to suppress evidence. Major John Kaler's public attorney is claiming that Kaler was not read his Miranda rights until after he admitted to shooting those four people. In a filing on Friday, court documents say that during the initial police response, Kaler admitted to shooting his neighbors. A police officer then handcuffed Kaler and began walking him back to the patrol car where Kaler made more comments about his neighbors. The officer, the officer escorting Kaler advised the 31-year-old suspect that he would be read his Miranda rights before they continued. But in this filing, they claim that that officer told Kaler he needed to check on other people at the scene and never did so. It wasn't until more than two hours later that those rights were read to him during an interview with the police captain. Tonight, a Post Falls police officer was involved in a medical emergency and was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office says that they assisted the Post Falls Police Department in this emergency near North Idaho Road and East Fifth Avenue. Right now, there's no details as to what caused this emergency. The investigation remains underway, but police say that they have not discovered anything suspicious at this time. We do expect to learn more information on Monday. Turning now to the urgent investigation underway in Detroit after a murder of a synagogue president. Police say that Samantha Wall was found stabbed to death outside her home this weekend. Officials say all possible motives are being investigated. Authorities tell ABC News that no evidence has surfaced to suggest that the killing was motivated by anti-Semitism. ABC's Alex Perche is in Detroit tonight. Tonight, authorities in Detroit on high alert after the brutal murder of the president of a local synagogue. Detroit police say Samantha Wold was found around 6.30 a.m. Saturday outside her home. The 40-year-old stabbed multiple times, a trail of blood leading back to her townhouse. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Wohl had led the Isaac Agri Synagogue in downtown Detroit since last year. I'm just numb at this moment. You know, Sam was such an amazingly kind person. Um, I can't imagine anything like this happening to her. Late today, Wohl's body laid to rest. Her family remembering her as a beautiful soul. Our world is shattered without you. You brought us light. And Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel, who previously worked with Wohl, writing, Sam truly used her faith in activism to create a better place for everyone. She really was a, a genuinely kind, sweet person that touched everyone that she knew. So far, police have not identified a suspect or possible motive. 
Detroit's police chief saying in a statement, the investigation into the death of Miss Wool remains ongoing. At this time, however, no evidence has surfaced suggesting that this crime was motivated by anti-Semitism. Michigan's Governor Gretchen Whitmer says in a statement that her heart breaks for Wool's family and friends. The FBI and state police are now assisting Detroit PD in this investigation. Alex Perche, ABC News, Detroit. Overseas tonight, close to 5,000 people are dead in Gaza, according to the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Over 14,000 more have been wounded. One CNN journalist says that hospitals in Gaza are overwhelmed with patients affected by the overnight airstrikes. Some bodies have to be kept on the grounds surrounding the hospital if the morgue is full. It is possible Israel will follow these airstrikes with a ground invasion. As the United States ramps up its military support and urges Israel to delay any ground incursion into Gaza, we're seeing more pro-Palestinian demonstrations in Western countries. Mike Valerio brings us more on Israel's war on Hamas. Heightened hostilities along Israel's northern border with Lebanon. Fighting a war on two different borders is going to be something we should keep our eyes on. And we should send the message to Hezbollah, stand down or there will be consequences. The influence of Iran-backed Hezbollah in South Lebanon is raising concerns of a potentially broader conflict. Israel now urging more northern residents to evacuate their homes. We encourage them at uh, every every opportunity, John, to make sure that you know, we are accounting for those civilians that are in the in the battle space. The situation triggering a surge in military support from the United States as additional missile defense systems are dispatched and some 2,000 U.S. troops are put on standby for potential deployment. The Biden administration has proposed an additional $100 billion in foreign aid. That would include $14 billion to assist Israel, which has drawn criticism from some members of Congress. We need to have a single focus on bringing Congress together behind the support for Israel. As questions arise regarding what actions the U.S. should take to support Israel and mitigate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, pro-Palestinian demonstrations continue in Western countries. President Biden taking a social media Sunday morning with a message that reads, quote, Israelis and Palestinians equally deserve to live in safety, dignity and peace. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. And closer to home here tonight, Feast World, uh, Feast World Kitchen in downtown Spokane hosted a fundraiser for Palestinians remaining in war-torn Gaza on Friday. Chefs say that they were tired of feeling helpless watching those horrible images and videos coming amid this war in the Middle East. So they decided to help with the way that they know how with food. How we can express about our anger, uh, about humanity. Uh, in our way, we did a lot of stuff through food, and food is the bridge that we're trying to reach for our voices to be heard. And 100% of the proceeds from every meal that was served on Friday went directly toward the Palestinian branch of the Red Cross. Well, meat is about to get a whole lot more crowded here in the coming years. Several large plots of land are being sold to retailers, medical groups, and home developers expected to transform the area here in the near future. It's been called the Northgate Project, and these projects will line the Newport Highway near the Costco. In total, close to 400 acres will be transformed, and that area you can kind of see there on your screen. 300 of those acres are going to be remodeled into 1,400 new housing opportunities in an urban mixed-use neighborhood. 60 acres is on hand for retail opportunities, and the idea is that this can hopefully bring more foot traffic to the north side and create more convenience for the people living there, especially once that north-south corridor is eventually completed. Well, people will venture up this way a lot more, depending on what uses, commercial uses are going to be put up there. This is going to create a lot more convenience for the people that live on the north side. The other major announcement is that MultiHealth has also purchased 30 acres of land right next door to Costco bringing additional health care options to this rural part of town. Oh, well, we've known for a while that Seahawks general manager John Schneider is one of the best in the business, and it seems like well, he's done it again with the latest draft class for the Seahawks. On Sunday, both feet in bounds. That was the biggest game of the season for him so far. He goes for four catches, 61 yards. Finally, on... We were waiting for, for Jax to get going. Obviously knew we needed to get him the ball. Uh, we did today. Um, so now you guys are seeing what we see every day in practice. Um, but with 14 out, we knew we were going to have to step up. 
you know, Bobo, he's a great player. And, you know, I knew he was going to get one today, if not, you know, more. So um, he, you know, took advantage of the opportunities. And, you know, that's just what we got to do as uh, young receivers, you know, trying to figure out our role. And, you know, uh, I heard it's a part of history. So that's definitely cool. Now that Seattle offense is definitely going to be tested next week. They're going to travel out to Cleveland to take on the Browns, who are only giving up less than 250 yards per game on defense. The Cleveland Browns. How about that, Jordan? That is exciting. Well, the Browns came off a pretty big win today, so right. I'd like for a great matchup next week, Alex. Well, still to come here tonight, this cold turn of the weather is another reminder to get that flu and COVID vaccine. Today was the first of a series of free walk-in vaccination clinics. When that next round of free vaccines are coming your way and the incentives they're offering to get you in the door. Plus, this week's Air Force Adventure gives you a bird's eye view of the slopes near the Idaho-Montana border as we make a turn towards winter. And yeah, not a lot of snow on those snow, uh, snopes, slopes right now. But there's definitely going to be a lot more by the time we get to the end of this week. And we have a really good chance for our first freeze, hard freeze. And I don't know, I guess if there's an extra hard freeze, we'll probably get that too here in the next week. Around the inland northwest, your full chilly forecast coming up after this. Track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. 4 News Now is brought to you by P1FCU. It's the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. And right now, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Plus, get four years no interest financing. But hurry, the home makeover sale at Furniture Row ends soon. All October long, join me for some late night stakeouts with Halloween Bonanza double features. Come on, let's go check it out. Sven Gulli's Bonanza. All October long on MeTV 4.2. Sorry about that car accident. Got that insurance claim check for you. I gotta call Swap. Ah! I gotta call Swap. Here you go. Ah, that's it. I'm calling him. You forgot your check. Craig Swap and Associates is on your side. We'll make sure you get the help you deserve, and we only get paid after you win. One call, that's all. 509-999-9999. At Kaiser Permanente, we care for all those who make your family, well, your family. That's why all of us work together to give them the care and caring that any family would. Kaiser Permanente, for all that is you. What you're seeing today is a successful eye surgery. And this, the dedicated hours of virtual training that made it happen. Academic advancements are being achieved every day through collaborative, hands-on learning. Upskilling careers, now made possible through immersive environments. These are the ways the metaverse is being used today. Crime is skyrocketing, and the homelessness crisis is just getting worse. When will it be enough? I'm Kim Please, running to make our neighborhoods safer and to help those in need. Vote Kim, please, for City Council President. 4 News Now is brought to you by Parker Subaru. My advice to all the fathers out there, they grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Dreaming of the delightful drowsiness of the perfect mattress? Then the incredible value sale at Denver Mattress is for you. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend, plus four years no interest and free shipping. Score sweet savings on some serious shut-eye only at Denver Mattress. 4 News Now is brought to you by Kerner Furniture. Thanks for staying up with us here tonight. With that weather starting to cool off this upcoming week, anticipation is building for the start of ski and snowboard season. To get pumped up, we are giving you a bird's eye view of the slopes near the Idaho-Montana border. Let's go for a ride on the Air Force drone over Lookout Pass. ski area in Idaho since 1935 and we've been operating continuously ever since it's just been 
Nice, easy terrain, a nice mix of terrain, but what's really exciting is what we have coming on in the future uh, with the expansion of the back bowl. High quality snow, averaging over 400 inches a year. The past two years, we've had 462 and 502 inches. We do not have any snow making, but I will say that we've been blessed by Mother Nature and Old Man Winter, because it falls from the heavens. We have terrain that's challenged for both skiers and snowboarders. We have some terrain parks that are nice and fun. We've got one of the longest natural half pipes on the mountain. It's an old uh, drainage from mine at the top. It's called Rolling Thunder. A lot of our senior skiers really like this easy transition from the parking lot. They can literally walk on a flat surface, no steps, no stairs, right to the lift, start skiing. Kind of going up the chairlift line, just a little off to the left side of the chairlift line is known as the Idaho face. And the other side is known as the Montana face because that's the dividing line between the two. Boy, doesn't that make you just want to get out there, shred the gnar mat? Oh man! And Lookout's a great, great little spot too. I haven't too. been up there yet. You gotta go. That's that's on my bucket list for this winter. Sip some Wallace beer in the lodge, you oh. know. Have yeah, a good that looks time. great. And they got a whole new mountain that's opened up because I was skiing there like ten years ago when they didn't have all the oh, that. Is that right? Fighting the yeah. There's there's a whole story where I got trapped. Uh, <laughs> the, there was a snow day and all the kids went to look out and I thought it was going to be empty and it wasn't oh, on the Montana really? side. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, a lot of there fun. were no parking spots. I turned back. <laughs> I tried to get another weekend. It was fine. All right. Well, we're talking a lot about wintry things, so let's get right to it. I've stalled you long enough. Friends, winter is here, especially the higher elevations. The real cold in the valleys is going to start on Wednesday. And once we get past Wednesday, we're going to go into territory that we have not seen since we were coming out of last winter. As far as temperatures, our first valley snow is possible as we get into Wednesday and by the next weekend, low 20s in the morning. So our snow levels, this is cool air comes in starting off tomorrow morning at about 7,000 feet. Tuesday morning, however, really starting to drop here. And we'll see our passes potentially seeing some snow, especially in the Cascades on Tuesday morning. And then Wednesday morning, it's all the way down below 1,000 feet, our snow line. And that is when things get a little bit squirrely around here and why we have a potential weather alert day for Wednesday and that's the time that you need to be paying attention to in the forecast because that could be our first snow in the metro regions, Metro Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, the I-90 corridor, whatever you want to call it, winter driving conditions potentially here as well. Once again, Wednesday morning, specifically the Wednesday morning commute. Now, why is this not a full-on weather alert day? Well, the timing and the temperatures, small little details that we're still just a little bit too far away to really nail down right now are going to make a huge difference in how that Wednesday morning commute goes. So let's fast forward here. Monday, by the way, going to be a really nice day. We have a small chance for a couple of showers around lunchtime and then the late evening around North Idaho. But for the most part, it's going to be a nice day. Now, as we go into Tuesday, uh oh, here comes mountain snow into our northern valleys and mountains and into the Cascades. All of a sudden, we got to start checking those pass cams if you got plans Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as well. Wet weather starts to move in. It's going to start off as rain. You can see it swirling around central Washington here on Tuesday evening. And then as we head into Tuesday night, the exact track of this moisture is going to be hugely important because we're going to get this band of wet weather. It's going to set up somewhere right around the I-90 corridor. If it's a little bit further north, obviously that changes the calculus for places like Sandpoint. If it's a little bit further south, well, that could certainly change things as well when it comes to what the temperatures are, how much snow there potentially could be when that rain snow transition happens. There's a bunch of really complicated stuff going on here, but what you need to know right now is that it could be slushy and slippery and a little bit icky. Wednesday morning, and we know the first time out in snow is never the funnest uh, day on the morning commute there. So 90 corridor snow chances. These are about 20% at the start of the weekend. Our chances for measurable snowfall now, well, you see where they are now. So yeah, things have changed a lot this weekend to where we're looking at significantly cooler temperatures 
than we were thinking just a couple of days ago. And that likely means that things are going to feel a lot more wintry here in just a couple of days. So possible weather alert day for that. I can't believe I'm talking about this snow impact here. We were, it was 70 degrees last weekend. Then it's chilly. Cover up the plants, turn on the heat, get your ice scrapers, find them where, they, where you threw them in the back of the car in the spring because you are going to need them. You fended it off as long as you could, Matt. That's right. All right. Well, thanks for that. And today was the first of a series of free walk-in flu and COVID vaccination clinics, which are becoming more important as we make that turn towards winter. Allison Martinez has the details you need to know. Colder days are quickly approaching. If you're in need of a vaccine update, you may be in luck. Consistent Care of Spokane is offering a free walk-in clinic starting today at the downtown Spokane Library. It feels good to do something for the community here. Consistent Care of Spokane is teaming up with LGBTQ plus seniors of the Inland Northwest for a series of free walk-in vaccination clinics. These clinics are open to the entire community and are intended to help the elderly and disabled. We really care about uh, making sure that people have access to vaccination clinics, low barrier vaccination clinics, because we know that that means people will most likely get vaccinated and protect them and their families. Rue Ramos is the executive director of the Spectrum Center, which helps helped make today's clinic possible. Ramos said they got vaccinated to protect their immunocompromised mom. She lives with us and so we are all committed to making sure that she lives as long as possible. So we got our vaccinations as early as we could, which is today, and we're super excited to be able to protect our loved one that way. Flu and COVID shots are offered at the next clinics. The process is simple. Attend and fill out a brief questionnaire. When you're done, you'll get a $25 gift card for groceries. There are four more clinics scheduled for this season. The next one will be on home Halloween at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Spokane. For more information on upcoming clinics, you can visit our website, kxly.com. Reporting in Spokane, Allison Martinez for News Now. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. Every year, the crowds go crazy for the Cal Triple Play of the Day you can get tricked out cool trucks or sporty SUVs just in time for winter. And this week, you can delay all games until next year. Get a minimum $2,000 trade-in value for your old ride, plus get a two-year service maintenance program with every vehicle sold, which is a triple play opportunity. This week at both Cal locations. The fall sleep savings have been extended one last week at Walker's Furniture. And that means a great time to improve your sleep for less. As Walker's marks down many of their best-selling name brand mattresses and special five years financing available. And no money down and no minimum purchase. So you can get that new Serta Perfect Sleeper mattress and pay for it later. Plus, get an additional $300 of free furniture with select sets sold. These final days at Walker's. I had a lot of bad days with gout, but that one took the wedding cake. Even with medicine, my uric acid was still too high to stop painful gout buildup. Then a gout specialist told me about Cristexa. Cristexa is a prescription medicine for adults with gout whose symptoms are not controlled by other gout medicines. I learned Cristexa quickly starts working to break down gout buildup. Cristexa is an infused medicine. Serious life-threatening allergic reactions can occur while taking Cristexa. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as shortness of breath, trouble breathing, dizziness, itching, or swelling of the throat or tongue. Cristexa is not recommended if you have high levels of uric acid without a history of gout. Do not take Cristexa if you have a rare disorder called G6PD deficiency or favism. Before receiving Cristexa, tell your doctor if you have a history of heart problems in all the medicines you take. Cristexa may cause gout flare-ups, allergic reactions, nausea, bruising, sore throat, constipation, chest pain, and vomiting. I received Cristexa for about six months. Now I'm in control, not gout. Find a doctor who specializes in gout at goutdocnow.com. The most important issue in this mayor's race? Crime and public safety. I'm Nadine Woodward. We cannot let Spokane become Seattle. It's why I increased police patrols, opened new precincts, and got dangerous offenders off the streets with our Violent Crimes Task Force. My opponent? She's helped fund criminals and is supported by anti-police activists. I'm proud to be endorsed by law enforcement. I'm Nadine Woodward and I approve this message. Let's make crime illegal again. There's nothing worse than politicians who say one thing then do another. Like Lisa Brown who said, People care about crime. They want 
uh, people who break laws to be held accountable by our law enforcement system. I, I believe that. Brown's actual record, she gave our tax dollars to the bail project of Spokane, which bails out violent offenders. Brown gave a $50,000 grant to La Taxion, a felon convicted of murder. We can't trust Lisa Brown to keep Spokane safe. 4 News Now is brought to you by UFCW. Well, just a few weeks ago, it would have been unthinkable. The Washington State Cougars could be in danger of missing out on a bowl game, but after three straight losses, the Cougars are reeling, and there's just not a whole lot of momentum for the former 13th-ranked team in the nation. And yesterday against Oregon, the Ducks showed just how much further ahead they are than Wazoo in their 38-24 win. While the offense showed up in a big way compared to the last two weeks, the defense was a different story. They struggled to get the Ducks off the field, and Oregon really imposed their will in the second half to keep the those slim college football playoff hopes alive. Now, I don't think it's crazy to say this upcoming matchup down in Tempe next weekend is a must win. Arizona State, they're coming off a heartbreaking loss to UW late last night, and they got nothing to lose. Now, across in Cheney, the Eastern Washington Eagles ended their two-game skid yesterday as they hold, held on to beat Weber State 31-23 on homecoming. And this game was all about the balanced attack of the Eagles on offense. Quarterback Keikoa Viceparis went for more than 225 yards and a touchdown in the air and on the ground. While the running backs put up nearly 200 yards on the evening to help lift the Eagles to their third win on the season and maybe instill a bit of confidence into this group. It feels a lot different. I mean, that game, I feel we just we played like Coach Best was saying. We played like a good like it was like 40 some 45 minutes or something like that. And this game, I felt like we played a whole good 60 minutes. So this group's always been poised. It's it's unfortunate again. You know, they don't have a, a moment where they're we we, we we are deemed poised, and so all of a sudden everybody thinks that we're unpoised or we're not poised. And then we, you know, fast forward and then they're poised, and then they're not poised, and then they're poised, and they're not poised. I mean, it's just. That's right, Coach Poised. That's the word of the day. Eagles will look to keep their slim playoff hopes alive next week. They're going to travel down to Portland to take on the Vikings. Now, after coming off a disappointing loss to the Bengals last week, the Seattle Seahawks were looking for a bounce back win this afternoon against the Cardinals, and they got just that from the play of their rookie stars. In the first one for the first touchdown of his career, the 20th pick of the draft brought in four catches for 63 yards on the afternoon. Look how excited. So initially, that's going to be called incomplete. They would review it, overturn it. What an amazing grab for him, his second of the year. The, the pups to life in, in this game. It was great to see Jackson get his, his first touchdown, and he had uh, a number of contributions, and, and, uh, and Bobo, a freaking circus grab to hold that ball and get it by a, an eyelash down there and, and make that touchdown. It was a great play by both Chino and, and, and Bobo. Now, now let's head out expected to start the rest of the season because of the injury due to Anthony Richardson. So you can expect a lot more of Gardner where that came from. 4 News Now, we'll be right back.